Hi, welcome to this third part of this three-part video tutorial about building augmented reality applications using Unity. Um, I've shown you uh, the basics of uh, building some uh, this application using Unity and to, in this lesson I'll be showing you a bit more uh, about what you can do in order to create content inside Unity animations for instance because this is what you would really like to do um, to get uh, started I'll be starting my new project I'm naming it uh, lesson 3 and just have everything as a default here as well I always start my lessons with a clean slate like this because that's how you can learn to manipulate everything um, because that's what you're here for so in this workshop I'll be showing you the ropes to get going and for now I'll be importing assets import package custom package I've already had this downloaded so I've got my drivers here of Euphoria I need them imported so I'm gonna do that now I'm doing that another time because in the last video I also did this but I'm uh, this is important that you understand how this works how what the flow is of this um, this, 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 uh, this unity development uh, IDE and if all is well uh, oh, it already imported okay let's get some content in there uh, I'd like to show you how you can build your own 3d object uh, cube and how you can uh, get it uh, animated on top of an image target so to start again like I said uh, in the last video Qualcomm uh, you go to you click this and you go to prefabs you need the AR camera and you need the image target Bam, that's it and the AR camera you can move around so you can see what's in the game Just like that you have to uh, adjust it anyway because uh, if the image changes you need to adjust this as well but it's it's a good starting point here and uh, we go to image target I already got my data set test TB right so here here it is and I can go to AR camera and get it bigger so like that all right okay we need to um, load the data set here and activate it these are very important i can also tell you a bit more about oh yeah we need the app license key control v um uh, did i mention that in the last video I'm not sure I, and I, I know i got it from a license manager here and test app the stuff here so uh, control c thing I forgot to mention it in the last video but because uh, it already was filled in you need to put it in the app license key All right so uh, at Q C I R behavior put it in the app license key control C control V that's it and then here load data test and activate and the webcam well this doesn't work but maybe you have a working camera I have a guess uh, it will work it should work um, I'm also showing you uh, how to build this for because now it's building this if I go to file build settings it's building this for my uh, PC it's Windows x86 you can also build this for an Android and you can just check this and add current yes uh, lesson 3 it needs to name uh, the, the level I'm building so I just named it lesson 3 dot unity so you can you have to press add current to get the lesson the scenes of the of what you're building inside here and you can press Android and then you can press build but before you can do that uh, an Android uh, would then automatically be used as an yeah you can use the Android to look at the image target and it's a much better experience to do that 
So at this time available, you you will be able to try this as well. But for that to work, you need to go to uh, you need to download the Android SDK and Android IDE Android Studio. Here we go. Download Android Studio. Uh, you have to press this and then download Android Studio. It has also the drivers on board to, to get uh, started. And uh, there's a bit more setup. Oh, I need to get rid of this. Um, this is uh, also, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that this is also possible. Like I said, the, if, if there's time available, you can use the camera of your PC, but also you can use the camera on an Android, and it gives a much better augmented reality experience as well. I'm not going to cover that because it's there's not much time available, but it's possible to just uh, build on that one as well. And then you can put it on the Android device, and you have your own little augmented reality app on the Android. But uh, I'm here to show you how you can build all this with Unity. And it doesn't matter what platform. Unity exports to di all these different platforms as well, so that's very handy. So we only you got you know, we only have a PC, Mac, and Linux, but you can export to iOS or BlackBerry. Ugh. Who exports to BlackBerry? Windows Phone. Okay, and this is really nice. WebGL. You can export it to something that runs on a any web browser that has the capability of WebGL. That's great. And Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Um, but uh, you, I guess you have to you have to pay extra for this. Also, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, PS4. I mean, you can just build an app, one app, and you can export it to all these different uh, platforms. That's great. Uh, Unreal Engine also does this, so uh, it's it's a nice time uh, we live in for uh, if you want to create stuff like this. It's it's made really really easy. Okay, let's get back to the to business, right? So I've got this. Uh, AR camera here and um, I made this image target and what I want to do is just pressing the uh, double clicking the image target will get me uh, zoomed in I'll be creating another cube but this cube I'm gonna shape I'm gonna scale it 10 10 10 so we have a, a rather large cube and I'm gonna press R to scale it in and up and like that a bit. I want to have it rotating just like a maybe a fan or something or I just want to have it have some movement in there so you, you I, I've shown you in the previous video how you can do a static object and just put objects on to, uh, on this tag here and it will show uh, I mean the the Fuforia um, stuff uh, does its trick and then it'll show on your device that has the camera and in this case uh, I want you uh, I want to show you that you can uh, use um, uh, an animation to get more dynamics inside your uh, in, the, in the experience so let's do that okay let's get some material on there. I'm going to uh, my asset store again. I love the asset store. I mean every time I think of something I can just search the asset store and it's there either free or a couple of euros, euros and uh, I can go to textures, press the price tag here and I can go to let's try a different uh, material. Maybe it's uh, Come on, skyboxes, no, uh, grass, grass or one, why not, let's make it grass, let's press download, and there's a diffuse map, a normal map, and then, okay, I can press import, the normal map, I can tell that uh, is uh, something that makes it look like it has uh, features on the surface but it's not it's just a trick you can use and if you use a normal map for this or oh, really important if you use a normal map for this um, it has a big performance gain uh, so I'm just telling you that to get the time <laughs> passing more quickly because I need to go to unity 5 material and then 
click it on there. So I've got something green. Okay. Okay. What can I do now? I can press this object and I can go to window and then animation. Okay. So I've got this object selected and then window animation. I can guess press property and I can create a new animation. Let's say uh, my first animation. Just give it a name and press. Uh, you can also select. Uh, actually, uh, this is the this is the physical location of your project. You can go all the way back to assets and then save it there. Actually, it would be better to just um, make a directory called uh, animations and put it in there for organizational purposes. But I'm go just going to put it at the assets uh, location and then save it. Okay, I can do transform, I can do rotation, and I can press plus, and it'll just turn as a fan. Let's see how that works. Let me see. I can I can have a live preview of what this this parameter here would do. So let's put that at ninety. Okay, that's the one. So I can use that one to have it spinning. I get one second. Um, now let's go to two seconds. Put it here. The yeah the here the red line you can press on between these numbers and then you can put it at two. And let's have it um, put it there at so there it's uh, three sixty, and here in the middle it's at 180 so in let's see how that works you can go to uh, go to the start and then press play here we go it's already spinning isn't that great so I just made it an animation um, and I uh, it's on uh, the auto keyframes are on so this red thing here you can also uh, the, uh, turn it off but then you have to manually insert the keyframes but since it's on every time you put a this this line here somewhere and you change a value here keyframes are added to uh, show uh, what you're doing and you can also this is the dope sheet it's a strange name dope sheet but anyway you can also press curves and this is where you can see what your parameter is doing so you can let me just uh, the middle mouse button. You can uh, you can middle middle mouse button. You can zoom in and out, and this is the parameter what it does. It'll go all the way from there to there, and um, you can see it should say 360 at this point here. And does it? Does it? Yeah, about 360. So it starts at zero and then 360. You can press this, but this 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 the point here, and you can change it. Look at that. You can you can change this curve such a way that it, so it then it it first goes there and then up again. So let's see what that does. See that's. Uh, actually, I like it a lot better like that. So it's it's not a uniform motion, but it's it's more like a yeah some strange thing. You can also add different other. You can also do uh, not only that, but you can also add a position or a scale. Let's put a scale in there as well, since we're having fun with the animator. I'm just gonna press uh, pause, press this button here, and the scale in the beginning would be this. Let's go back to the dope sheet. It's much better there to make changes and zoom in. Uh, use the middle mouse button to get pan to pan around. You have to get used to this. And then let's put it at one again and have the scale and y direction double twenty five. And it would go back to twelve again. So it will go and go smaller, bigger, and smaller. This is what it's doing. Here we go. Here we go. So you can animate all these properties. It's great stuff. All right. So I'll just quit this, and this would now animate on this target. 
So that would help you uh, get some more, uh, get some really easy uh, animations going as well. Uh, one more thing I want to show you is that you can add a sound source. Uh, by the way, I've got to, if you've got an AR camera here, there's a camera inside here, and you've got a main camera here. Uh, the main camera you can delete. The scene only needs one camera, so I just deleted that one. And I want to add sound to the scene. Because if you have a portable device like an Android or an iOS phone, Apple phone, you can export this to that phone and then have it. Uh, you can you can point it at the tag, and if you're closer to the tag, you can hear sound. And I want to show you that it's possible. Audio, audio source. So this audio source is now nowhere to be found. Think it's yes. This is not what I want. Remove component. What I want is just click inside the scene so nothing is selected, and then if we go to audio. Oh wait a minute. Um, yes, we can have this. Oh, you need. Okay, you need to select an object, and then you can say. So I selected the the cube or the rotating thing, and now I can put it audio source in and if you have got this stuff selected here and I can go down and this the audio source I can put an audio clip in there but I don't have anything loaded yet but if you have an mp3 uh, just assets import new asset and import the mp3 and if you point that this one here to if you click that little circle here you can choose your mp3 and what happens is that uh, once you uh, have that loaded, it's, it starts playing on awake. So if you play the game, this button here, this uh, check mark here, it'll just play. And you can also press loop, so it keeps playing. So you, if you maybe you can get some background music going. Um, and yeah, th this is also something really nice and 3D sound settings. You can you can tell yeah it's, there's a lot of tweakable things you can do here so this shows that if you're very far away you won't hear a thing but only if you're closer it's going uh, uh, logarithmically it'll pzz, the, the the sound volume level will go up so if you very close to this object here the distance this is the distance it'll have a very loud uh, volume of the sound you uh, you were playing. Okay, so and uh, the last thing I want to tell you about image targets tracking, um, Fuforia gives you the opportunity to do an, uh, an enhanced uh, tracking mode, and for that um, you need to go to uh, AR camera and smart. All right, I found it. It's not on the AR camera, it's on image target. So I had difficulty finding it again. It's on image target. There's this extended tracking. And what this does is if you point the camera, any camera, either from a PC or a Mac or from an Android or an iOS, if you point the camera at a tag and it recognizes the tag, um, what happens if you don't have this checked, if you move the camera away from the, so it's out of view of the camera, the tracking will get lost. So this extended tracking will give you the opportunity to keep, keep tracking, even though your tag is not within view of the camera. Uh, and it doesn't work perfectly, but it works better than if you wouldn't check. So I always have this checked. So you get a much yeah better experience. All right, that's it. I hope I gave you uh, enough knowledge to get started with your own little augmented reality projects.